Welcome back. It's only a few miles from the holiday island of Corfu, but it's Europe's most isolated country. It's Albania, where there are no private cars, officially no God, and where the party tells you where to live and what to do. It's a Stalinist museum piece so orthodox that it's rejected both China and the Soviet Union. Almost nobody gets permission to film there. But after three years of negotiation, a Barcelona television crew were allowed to record this unique look at life in Albania, the last outpost. A provincial town in Albania, where foreign influences are generally kept out and Albanians generally kept in. Those trying to flee their homeland face up to 25 years in prison. An international football match is one of the few contacts for most Albanians with the world outside. Even football is overshadowed by the man who founded the Albanian Communist Party in 1941, Enver Hoxha. These pictures were broadcast on Albanian television on Hodja's 75th birthday. After World War II, he became absolute ruler of this dictatorship of the proletariat. Three years ago, he died. Again, Albanian coverage of his lying in state and funeral. Hodja died without a friend on the world stage. He had cut ties with the Soviet Union in 1961 and with his final ally, China, in 1978, denouncing both for their revisionism. Foreign delegations were not allowed to the funeral. A telegram of sympathy from Moscow was returned unanswered. In front of the coffin, his successor, Ramis Alia, made a promise. Albania would not change. Three years later, little has changed. The central square in the capital, Tirana. There are still no traffic jams because there are no private cars. This mosque in the center of Tirana has its doors locked. In 1967, Albania was declared the first atheist state in the world. This cafe was once the church of St. Procopi. Throughout Albania, mosques and churches were demolished or converted into warehouses, markets or sports centers. Lulzim Haska is teaching the history of the Albanian Workers' Party in Girokastra, a country town in the south. Next year, these 14-year-olds will start a new subject, dialectical and historical materialism. Rugën e lavdishme të saj që me themelimin për shirimin e vëndit dhe 
for the team in the socialism. The children with the best marks and the best connections go on to university in Tirana. The party decides how many students to admit, what they will study and where they will work. The function of literature in Albania is clear. Children's books constantly refer to class struggle and the construction of socialism. Expression of liberal and decadent bourgeois ideas is banned. Dissent is crushed. Political prisoners serve long sentences in forced labor camps. Pride of Place goes to the more than 40 works of comrade Enver Hoxha. His orthodoxy, which led to the break with the Soviet bloc and with China, has meant great sacrifices. Most major industrial projects were left unfinished, as foreign advisors, technicians and aid all vanished. The constitution forbids loans from abroad, so Albania proudly claims no foreign debt, no creditors. This factory is the Enver Hoxha combine in Tirana, making spare parts for lorries and tractors. Some of the machines now come from West Germany and Sweden. Some still bear Chinese letters. Workers' representative, Beznik Chendro. <laughs> Officially, there is no unemployment, but Albanians enjoy the lowest per capita income in Europe, about 50 pounds a month. Theoretically, no one has been allowed to earn more than twice as much as anyone else, though there have always been perks, and now incentive schemes are coming in too. Yani Rochi has been a party member since 1983. He joined the youth wing when he was 17. At three o'clock on Saturday, his 48-hour working week is over, and he takes the bus home. He says, being a party member doesn't give him advantages, just more responsibilities. As with all Albanian workers, it is the party which effectively allocates him his job, his apartment and his town. Yani lives in an apartment on Gogonushi Street named after a former member of the Politburo. Our Albanian interpreter thought that the fruit bowl looked unusually well stocked. When I was in the Polytechnic in the morning, I was 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 in the morning, Unë darë në përndërmarje, unë dhe një pjesë të shokëve vajtën në kombinatin autotraktorave, një pjesë të shokëve vajtën në përndërmarje të tjera të tiranës, ata që ishin konviktor nga rethet, shkua në rethet e tyre, për të punua në përndërmarje që kanë rethet e tyre, uzinat mekanike, oficinat mekanike, ata që ishin nga kooperativat bujësore, punua në pranë së më të dhe. Enver Hoxha watches over the four-roomed flat where Yani lives with his telegraphist wife, their two children and his parents. Sunday, the family go to the circus. Albania has the youngest population in Europe and the highest birth rate. The population is estimated to reach three and a third million by 1990. The state wants to increase the population and benefits couples with children. The party 
encourages strict standards of morality, Stalinism coinciding with the country's largely Muslim past. Contraception and abortion are illegal. Sex is disapproved of before the wedding day, especially for women. That day has arrived for Teuta. Her father opens the ceremonies. Marriage is considered very important and the parties can go on for days. So far, only the bride's family has arrived. Two hours later, the groom arrives. Astrich is an electronic engineer. Teuta is a dentist. They met a year ago. Parents greet and toast each other. This party won't be over until tomorrow, when the bride is taken to her new house along with her belongings. Divorce is legal, but frowned upon. The party local committee sometimes tries to persuade a couple to stay together. The key moment of the night, the couple dance alone. The moment when the handkerchief burns out marks the end of bachelorhood. Albanian farming was the most backward in Europe before the communists took power, and it's still largely unmechanized. Hodges' first reforms broke up the big private estates and gave five hectares to each family that worked on the land. In the next 20 years, these plots formed into cooperatives, which are now supposed to pass to the state. This cooperative in the Mediterranean South comprises three villages. <laughs> This cooperative is called 16th of October, after Hodges' birthday. It's the time of the orange harvest, so there is work for Salamet. His cooperative owns its own land, but most of the workers say they would like it to pass to the state. They would then get a fixed monthly wage. The houses here are private property, built and paid for by the peasants themselves. In Tirana, the state provides. A month's rent for a flat, just a day's wage. Many buildings are having an extra floor built on to cope with the growing population, now 200,000. Albania boasts that its constitution bans any form of tax, but with such low wages, living standards are very basic. The 
The Constitution also outlaws foreign loans, so foreign trade is based on barter, with virtually no consumer goods imported. The government admits food shortages, and some queues start at three in the morning. But on the day that the crew visited this shop, there was plenty of food available. All prices are set by the state. Albania publishes no economic statistics, but part of the budget, as everywhere, goes on defense. This sequence was filmed without permission. These are defensive bunkers. They are everywhere, some equipped with machine guns. Albania was invaded repeatedly after it gained independence from Turkey in 1912. So the new communist government established a defense strategy mobilizing the entire population, popular defense. Even today, Albanians have to do nine days of army exercises a year in case of attack, and military training begins in the schools. Throughout Tirana, there are defensive shelters. The fear of invasion has been a source of national unity. Since withdrawing from the Warsaw Pact in 1968, Albania has had no military allies. On the roof of a tractor factory, more machine guns. Every Albanian does two years of compulsory military service. Young people also have to do voluntary labor. The film crew's guides were reluctant for these volunteers to be filmed and particularly anxious that they should not be shown eating. <laughs> Albania needs new railways for the export of its copper and chrome. The hundred young people on this project are working for a month without wages. And that's Albania, a European odyssey still frozen in the shadow of the late Enver Hodja. And that's all from us for this.